All right, so today we're interviewing White, a BN and organizer of the Community Mentorship Program. We're gonna talk about all the mapping drama, how the system works, talk about many different concerns, and hear an official opinion of somebody who actually participated in the system. And we're gonna debunk a lot of rumors. Everything is gonna be timestamped in the video and in the description, so you can skip to any questions you're interested in. We can make it better. The system nowadays, you can make an argument that it is like circle G or has like too high of standards or too low of standards or whatever arguments you want to make, but I don't think anyone intentionally made it that way. It just kind of naturally evolved in that way. I started OSU in February of 2020, started mapping July of 2020, and then I became a BN in I think 2022. Um, and then I ranked my first map after that. Um, like I went through like a six month period in the BNG and then I quit and then I ranked my map. And I don't think that my, my time in the BN really helped me in any way other than it helped me understand the process. Like a lot of the opinions that are thrown around are things that I personally believed and said. And I was the kind of person who dunked on BNs in 2020 before I knew what the process was. Like I remember going with my first map and I'm like, why does no BN want to rank this? This is like my, this is like the greatest map ever. It's so much fun. And I have like 500 plays on it and lots of people saying that like they like it. Um, like why, why would nobody want to rank this? And it, it was only until like a year, two years later when I actually started to kind of understand what was going on with the system that I'm like, the system as it is, is not perfect. And I think that most people would not call it perfect. But mm -hmm. there is no suggestions that are being proposed that is superior to it in any way. And a lot of the actual improvements that could be made require Pepe's input and require Pepe's support because they require systemic changes that are not possible without Pepe actually doing so it. So we're still going to talk about the 2019 uh, BN groups and how they were able to rank anything they wanted. But how bad do you think it is right now? Like there is a lot of concerns about like BNs uh, ranking whatever they want only because they have connections and uh, doing it just for controversy. So I don't think it's very bad right now, to be honest. It's certainly not as bad as it was in 2019 or 2020 um, when it was like really bad. Um, I obviously do think that there is some element of, you know, having friends and these connections um, that matter and getting your maps ranked. Um, and that's just largely because that the game is socially driven, right? It's a small community and you actually have to interact with people to get your maps ranked. Mm -hmm. um, so people who are well known to be very nice and friendly people will have an easier time ranking something than people who are constantly criticizing the system and the people who are trying to help them, you know? Um, so that actually matters quite a bit. There's like a lot of people who complain that their maps aren't getting the attention that they deserve. And we go back to what I've been saying for the last hour long, and it's just that their maps are less interesting, less inspired than other people's. And I think the game has been out for so long that you can't just keep copy pasting the same map over and over again and expecting to get the same level of reception because you have to keep developing right like you can't mm -hmm. stagnate um as the level of mappers and players increases you as a mapper have to continue to improve or you're just gonna end up falling behind right and why would somebody choose your map over somebody else's when their map is just more interesting? That's what people are getting wrong at the end of the day. Um, and oh, yes. to be fair, a lot of new mappers, newer mappers, are going to struggle with that. They've, they're have they 10 years behind the curve, right? And they have to work hard. You actually have to work hard in order to get maps ranked these days as a very new mapper because you have to catch up to people who have had five, ten years of additional practice on you. And that's just how it is, right? Like, that's how it is in real life. You know, you have to go to school for 12 plus years in order to get a job that pays you money. And then you have to work your way up the ladder. And it's the same idea here. You can't expect to come along and make a map your first try that's rankable or good. Yeah, because we don't and, want to and... make the same mistake from like 2019 when there was like a bunch of same fire maps from Chica Chica. That were like yeah, I just mean, that, pee -pee chasing. 
multiple layers to it, of course. You need to fix these issues that we solved a long time ago and bring your maps up to the 2024 level of quality uh, before your map can get really ranked. Um, and there's obviously like a lot of subjectivity involved in that. Uh, and you ask different people as to like what kind of level of quality comprises that or what kind of thing that they're looking in their map. And it's going to be different for each person, but that's why we have a pretty large BNG. You know, we have over like 70 BNs, I think, right now, that each have their own things that they're looking for and their own interests and that kind of thing. Like The, the, the system is not closed off. Uh, and so, you know, when people come along, and we'll actually get to this later, so I won't get into it now, I guess, but when people come along and criticize the existing BN because they're not nominating the maps that they want, that's when you need to just become a BN yourself, like, and nominate the maps that you want to see. Like, do what everyone else in the BNG has done, and do it yourself. All right. And that's why I don't really like the idea that we we shouldn't be calling out the BNs for a system that they're just trying to participate in. Um, you know, many of them are trying to change the system. Many of them are pretty okay with the system. It doesn't really matter. You don't know their positions, so you shouldn't be mm -hmm. vill uh, villainizing all of them, right? Yeah, that's they're the... just in the system. Yeah, that's what. But we don't have any control over it. Mm -hmm, that's my point. That's what I kind of want to try to show. Some BNs are very hands-on and very involved. You know, you think of like Hybe or um, like Fuchu and other BNs who are involved, actively nominating, but also actively involved in management of the NAT, management of the BNG, um, you know, re reworking the ranking criteria to make it better. Um, so you have people who have like their different priorities and, and different levels of involvement. And I, I don't think that's a problem either way. Um, if the moment you require BNs to do more than they already are required to do, you are then eliminating the possibility of you're, you're sort of ruling out some people from participating, which I don't think is good to narrow the BNG. If anything, we'd want to make it bigger. Uh, but at the same oh, yeah. time, you can't make it, you can't, make it just like open to anyone because not everyone is really qualified to do that um there's many types of bns and you have like bns like lfj and timon who are very hands-off just because he doesn't involve himself in the wider community very much doesn't mean he's not doing his job as like a bn or doing something he's he just chooses not to do more than he has to at the moment and oh, i think yeah. that's fine you know he's been around for over a decade <laughs> you know you can't expect people to maintain the same level of involvement for I mean, their yeah, entire lives so you're strictly specified as a vocaloid mapper and mother so how many requests do you get per day or like like a week on average yeah so i would say like when a bn or any bn not just myself but really when any bn first opens after being closed like especially like new bns it's very common they're gonna get like 100 to 200 requests in a day or two Right, so it's not a, it's not like a oh, yeah, that's a way few more than maps. They're getting a lot of maps, which makes it very difficult for them to go through all those. Now, if you're open for a very long time, you know, like a week or two, the number of maps that trickles, um, so it trickles down after you if you've been open for a while. But a lot of times, that that hundred, two hundred maps that they get within the first day or two, that's can people choose to like oftentimes close. Uh, their requests because they have a ton of maps that they are wanting to get through. They may accept like 10, 20 out of all those requests. Um, maybe less, maybe, maybe more. Um, and it takes time to go through those requests. And so, you know, oh, yeah, most BNs sure. don't necessarily want to stay open accepting more requests when they already have a backlog of like 10 maps, right? It takes a while to get through those. So they might close, and then they reopen it, and then it happens again. They're going to get probably 50 to 100 requests on the second time they open, right? Um, every time that they open. Um, so it's very draining. At the same time, like what this ends up creating is a system where you have to make your map stand out when the BN looks at it. Otherwise, they're not really going to want to spend their time looking further and accepting your map when they have 200 others that they may choose, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I will only go through and accept the ones that, like, when I go through, I'm only accepting the ones that I think are actually interesting, because there's a bunch of them that are like, okay, this is rankable, you know, like, this is fine, but it's not interesting, it's not appealing to me, I don't care about this. 
So why am I going to waste my time? I mean, not waste my time, but like use my time on this when I'd rather use my limited resources of time on something that I actually do care about. And that's why you see a lot less of that 2018 generic PP jump map these days, because there is a billion of them out there. They're not interesting. They never were. They never will be. And you have a bunch of people just doing the same thing over and over again, and they wonder why they're not finding BNs. And it's because there's a way more mappers, and there's way more types of maps than there used to be. Why would people choose the less interesting ones over the interesting ones? You have to do something to make your map stand out. And I think that's really what people lack. Oh, yeah. So that, that was one of the arguments that so many maps are just being rejected. But yeah, since you have like other 200 maps in your queue, like you have to pick. And it's, for me, maybe not every BM is like this, but for me, I like to contribute unique things to the ranking section. I don't think that we need another um, insert popular PP map here, right? Do we need another six star jump farm map? No, we have hundreds, if not thousands of those from the past 10 years, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'd rather give the, the, the ranking section something interesting, like a unique song that's never been seen before. Maybe it's got a cool concept, or, you know, it doesn't even necessarily have to be uncomfortable. You know, by far, it doesn't have to be uncomfortable. It could be something that's very comfortable, but it's it got some kind of unique spin on it that, like, this is unique, and it represents the song in a unique way, because for me, why are you mapping that song if you're not going to do something unique to that song, right? Like, what is the point of you mapping... Um, a one OK rock song instead of, um, you know, insert other J rock band when, you know, you're making your map. And it, I would hope it's because you actually care about the song and you want to make that map unique to that song. If you're just doing the same one, two jumps on every single song that you have, that's not, that there's nothing meaningful in that, right? Right. Um, so I like to see maps that are doing something unique to the song and make that a special experience when you're playing that. Sure. All right. So, so you're also telling me that, uh, since like 2019, which like Sotox mentioned, I don't know, we can like go back to this Sotox tweet later if you want to, but like I'm relating to this other tweet in that question. So since 2019, you think there is way more maps just, uh, being submitted to BNs than, uh, I mean, I don't know. I unfortunately don't have any data on it, but I would imagine that the number of maps is increasing um, because the player base and the mapping base has uh, definitely grown since then. So I would only only imagine that the number of requests that BNs are getting has gone up. Um, so Do you get a lot of non-Vocaloid submission, even though you clearly said that you only take Vocaloid or like mostly like people not reading your bio or? Yeah, I mean, of course I do. Um, I mean, I accept really any kind of songs with, but I have my I have my preferences, like most people do. You know, uh, if you ask anyone, do they like every type of music imaginable? They most people are going to say no, and if they do say yes, they probably aren't being entirely truthful to themselves. Um, but I would never meet my activity requirements on just Vocaloid. There's just not enough mappers out there, so I do. Um, nominate a lot of stuff outside of Vocaloid. Most of my maps, I've, I've only nominated like a couple of Vocaloid maps. Yeah, I wish there was more good Vocaloid maps out there and good Vocaloid mappers, but uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of unfortunate. And there's like a lot oh, of yeah. like other there's... stuff, like popular Vocaloid. Like you think of like the popular Vocaloid maps that like pop off and you have a ton of covers. A lot of people map the covers of the Vocaloid stuff. Yeah, but there's already uh, a lot of them ranked, so. And a lot of the, yeah, they're remapping a lot of the same stuff that's already been ranked. They're mapping it in a pretty uninteresting ways. And, like, I don't really want to... Because, like, for me, if if you rank a song... Um, and I'm sure you've seen this in, like, other BNs. Maybe you haven't. But a lot of BNs don't like to rank songs that have already been ranked. Unless the map is, like, really different. Oh, yeah, that was one of the um, arguments, too. Because, you know, why are you... It's kind of like content bloat. You know, you don't really want to contribute to content bloat. Uh, we don't need map 500 of the same song. <laughs> Because uh, uh, the very unlikely you're going to do something unique there, and it discourages other mappers from 
mapping it. So like if I rank a map that's like bad of a song that I really like, just because I like the song, then I'm actually making it harder or less likely for a mapper to come along and make a good map of that same song because they're less likely to map something that's already been ranked. So I'd much rather, personally, I would much rather wait um, to rank something that I think is actually pretty solid instead of just, oh, I like the song, I'm going to rank whatever comes along. Yeah, I mean, every band has a different policy towards it. Um, I would say it's probably like a 50-50 split or something like that. Um, I don't have any specific data on it, but... Uh, there's definitely some people who are like, I prefer you not, I prefer not to rank the same, uh, song. There's some people who are like, kind of in the middle where they're, they're fine with ranking the same song as long as the map is unique. And then there's BMs I don't, just don't care. Um, and so it's just a matter of if you rank something that is already, or you're trying to rank something that's already been ranked, you're limiting your, uh, potential options of BNs. Um, mm -hmm. Which some people don't care about, especially if they have, like, uh, friends or, like, a lot of... A, you'll notice that a lot of those maps that um, have 10 ranks, like Haramachi Clover, for example, they're all from, like, pretty much the same people, and they're all generally the same kind of map, in, in that they're all typically pretty PP farm heavy, right? Like, uh -huh. they're, they're trying to abuse the PP meta, which... I won't deny that circle jerking doesn't exist because it does to some degree. It's overblown, um, and it was way bigger in 2018, 2019, and into 2020 when we had this, uh, you know, anti circle jerk kind of movement, and a lot of the circle jerking BNs got kicked. Well, Wait for real? Um, I, I didn't know yeah. about that. Yes, uh, it got really, really bad in 2019. Uh, but you had a lot of the the stereotypical pp farm mappers they could rank literally anything because they had several bns who would do the same thing and they would just trade nominations um and it, it got really bad like you had actual like maps that just were not okay and did nothing and were just like mindless jumps across the screen just to give uh, just to abuse the score and this really forced the NAT to do something, and they ended up kicking a lot of BNs from it. Uh, and they uh, and Pepe reworked the uh, PP uh, algorithms and, and things like that to change the meta because it got really bad. Um, and so, because of like a lot of those PP BNs being kicked and the PP meta changing, that is why we have way less. I think that is more of why we have way less. PP of like the the aim farm maps uh like you would have in 2019 it's because of that reason oh so you pretty much explained uh, responded to the question i was about to ask about the sutter suite i don't know if you know what which tweet i'm talking about but sutter tweeted that like comparing the stats from like 2019 to, 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 to 2023 that he had like 250 million plays on his own maps and uh -huh. which is more than 2023 in total Oh yeah, I remember that phase when like there was like five different maps out of Chica to Chica Chica, and it was all Sotarks and uh, and yeah, yeah I, I remember that. So I don't I don't deny it. There's pro maybe perhaps some part of Sotarks's tweet that is true, um, but I don't think it's the full story. I think there's a lot more involved to it, um, and I don't think it's fair to blame like the BNG or the NAT for banning these kinds of maps because we haven't for one. Um, but we've definitely taken a stand that, like, the copy-paste of, like, the same song over and over again, mapped in the exact same way, just for the fact of score PP inflating. Because what happens is that when you rank so many of the same stuff, people have to play those kinds of maps. It devalues every other skill set in the game. It devalues every other map in the game. Because now, in order to maintain your relevant uh, PP rank, you have to play the meta maps, right? And that's just not very fair. And if you have, it, imagine a hypothetical world where there's a hundred Chica Chicas or a Harimachi Clovers, and top play your your hundred top plays are all the same exact song. Like, yep, that, that is was, a that very real possibility that. And that... some people may even have that, but I don't think there's enough Harimachi Clovers for that to happen. Uh, but there's a very real possibility that if that meta kept going from 2019, we would have 
a dystopian world where everyone's top plays were Haramachi Clover, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I was guilty of that. As a, as a stream player, I had to play Chika Chika to get speaking. I remember that. Like, so what Subtrax, again, is saying is that mapping is dying because we're not allowing these maps into it, the ranked section. I think that's a little bit... It may be part of it. I won't deny that there may be some aspect of truth to it, but I don't think that's the full story. There's a lot of factors involved in how the number of ranked maps and, and, and the play counts have decreased over um, the years, right? Mm -hmm. um, for one, a lot of them active mappers of that era have gone away, they've gone older, they quit the game, whatever that may be. Um, so we have a lot less of those hyper prolific mappers, especially because um, the a lot of those hyper prolific mappers were mapping the same like copy pasted sort of sort of maps, right? You know, like the the height of Sotarx, for example, right? Um, so you have a lot less of these really low effort maps getting ranked. A lot of what the jump aim maps kind of rely on is retry spamming right where you're you know you've probably done it too right i mean who hasn't right when you're I mean, playing yeah, those yeah, yeah. jump maps you just spam retry because they're very short they're very spiky um you play like 30 seconds oh you miss you just restart it because it's like an only a 90 second song right um nowadays you don't really have that as much anymore because a lot of uh, maps are easier to full combo i think because they're not just cross screen jumps for 60 seconds um, and I wanted to rank up. What did I do? Try to get better? No, I tried to play maps that were like going to give me PP, right? Like easy maps that yep. gave me PP. Yep. Um, and so you, you make it so you encourage people instead of improving at the game and actually being able to challenge themselves to play harder maps, you're just, tra you're just challenging them to find the next map that is going to give them that PP fix, right? So, how long on average does it take to mod a map? Like, assuming it's not, like, totally bad, like, you're interested in it, like, how long would you say it takes? Um, so I think for most BNs, a, a map is going to take a couple hours to mod over its course of, of the modding process. You know, you first have to accept the map, which, you know, again, we go back to, like, going, sorting through that 150 requests kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that by itself can take a couple hours. <laughs> um, and then you actually mod it, which means you have to like get in the mindset and everything like that. But assuming you're in the mindset and you actually can sit down and mod it, that's a couple hours, right, for most people. Uh, maybe two hours to do the initial mod, two or three, and then you have to come back for the recheck, and then you, they you recheck it and see if they fucked up any other, fucked up any of the mods that you've, requested of them or maybe they screwed something else up or maybe you missed something on the first check so now you've gone through the second time then they go and recheck it again and then you recheck it again and see sometimes there's several iterations of that rechecking process and it can be a very very time consuming map to even nominate one or time, it's a time consuming process to even nominate one map um so that and it's just very time consuming it's very draining on every party involved um, and I do have quite a bit of respect for the people who can maintain a very high level of modern quality while also nominating a ton of maps. And I, the people I think of like with that are like Lasse um, in uh, Mordred. I think most people would have like a job outside of the game or something like that. And uh, they may only have like two or three hours in a day. And, you know, this is how you end up with BNs who take several months to nominate a map that they've been working on, right? Or even just getting to the modding process of a map where they have, you know, you, you might have a backlog of 10 maps or 20 maps that you've accepted because you want to help the mapper out or whatever that may be. And it takes, it can take a while to get to, to that point, right? Especially if you have to like, maybe you don't love modding. Like I don't actually really like modding. I do it because I like to map, rank maps that I think are cool. And so for me to like go and nominate a map, it's actually a kind of a difficult process to work myself up to that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure. So if, if you're lucky enough and you have the whole day to like spend on a map, you might be lucky to rank one map a day. Like if you work like several hours. I mean, if um, assuming the mapper is gonna like 
cooperate and do their mods at the same time. Yeah, assuming you have two BNs who are actively working all day and the modder is able to respond to your stuff immediately and that stuff, like I've actually had that where at my first rank map, I had a deadline to push it because I wanted to rank it on an important day. Um, and then we were going through it and like we had modded in the we had modded it previously and then on the day uh, that it needed to get nominated we were doing our rechecks and we found out like oh like the timing is a little bit wrong and there's like other things that need to get fixed and it's like oh boy like do we have to make sure that we're actually correct that the timing is wrong we have to make sure like i want to get second opinions and you know like it takes a, it's a process and you know my bn actually stayed up to like four in the morning to help me out <laughs> so it's like wow like it's okay. draining yes yeah, so for sure a lot of people underestimate how easy it is to like actually push a map for ranked like if i mod like some half slash map for example he's a great mapper his maps generally don't his mods or maps i should say don't generally need to be modded very much because you know he was a bn in the past he's very experienced mapper and player like his maps are pretty flawless from the get-go. But there is the occasional thing where it's like, okay, this could be approved, or, you know, oh, actually, your metadata is wrong. Like, you know, Peppy and the game take things like that very seriously. Um, so, you know, like, oh, your timing is wrong, your metadata is wrong, you know, we have to fix that. Um, so you still have to do a proper full check for every mapper, regardless of how experienced they are. Because even an experienced mapper can make mistakes. All right, so do you get a lot of, like, bad maps that you have to deny for that reason, like the map is like clearly from an inexperienced mapper and it's not ready for rank and it would take way too much long, too much time to like mod and, and get ready. So ha what percentage of, of requests maps are like maps like that are? I would say like probably most of them, probably not most of them, because I think that there's like a divide between very new mappers who are just not meeting the, the standard, like they aren't rankable. Um, whether that be they don't rank, rank, meet the ranking criteria or the maps are just a mess uh, for less ranking criteria specific reasons. Um, but, uh, and there's a lot of maps out there. So like probably a third of the maps are like that. Maybe you have like a new mapper. Maybe another third are like, and these are just kind of numbers I'm pulling out of nowhere, but you know, that's not really the point. Um, and then you have like another third that's like, mappers who are pretty solid um but their maps are just not very interesting and so they are rankable but they're not something that i would use my time on uh, and then there is the other remaining portion the very small portion of maps that are actually interesting they're um not necessarily by experienced mappers mind you you could have interesting good maps by people who have never ranked a map before in their lives um and those are the kinds of maps that I'm actually going to spend the time to look at and evaluate whether I want to actually help push. Um, they're not necessarily flawless either. Like, I will actually sit down and spend several hours modding a map if I think it's worth it. And the map at, they get at the end is going to be a, a cool map that contributes something to the, the game. Um, but I don't necessarily want to sit down and mod a map that has a ton of problems. or And then at the end of that, fixing that map, it's just another whatever map, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you now have contact to all, do, do you know or have contacts to all BNs in case you need their help, have map suggestions or need nominators? I would have contact with most BNs for getting help if I needed it for something. And that'd be like, oh, I have a question on this ranking criteria rule, I'm not sure. Or like, do you know what the metadata for this map is? Or, or do you think that this jump spike is okay? or you know whatever that may be especially for myself because like i'm pretty bad at the game so i have a lot of people who help me who are much better at the game to kind of evaluate whether you know something in a seven star map is actually appropriately you know for that difficulty right mm -hmm. um uh so you have that and some people just want second opinions and i think any bn can attest that like sometimes they just ask for second opinions on stuff and so yes you have contact with most bns uh, for that kind of thing. Not that you're going to contact most BNs because we have, have a, in the, the BN server, we have a, a, a channel for that kind of help. So you have people who are more prone to helping in that kind of case. Um, but I might ask my other BN friends, you know, what their opinions on, on stuff is. Um, 
if I find a map that I like and want to nominate, we can ask other BMs to assist us in nominating that map. Um, like, I'll, I'll find a map and be like, hey, this is a cool map. They, they need a two BNs. I'll be BN1 if you want to be BN2. And, you know, and it's, like, you know, nice and easy, and you can you can uh, help people out. BNs tend to like that because it helps, you know, you think back to the 150 BN requests. Instead of that, you have one BN that's vet, vouching for the popular, or, like, the, the quality of the map. And especially if you're friends and you can trust that BN's opinion on the map, like, I prefer when my BN friends come to me and are like, hey, this is a cool map. You want to nominate it with me? I'm like, heck yeah, because I can trust your opinion. It's probably a pretty solid map. You know, I don't have to do the sorting process myself. Um, mm -hmm. So that's helpful. As for the needing nominators, I would disagree with that. I don't think that I mean, myself or really any BN, they don't have the ability to just call up any BN that they want for their own maps. Um, that is uh, kind of a lie, honestly, in that. Um, you know, you have some BNs have like their BN friends who they can ask for their nom for the nominations. Um, but like, I can't go call Lasse because Lasse doesn't really know me. Like, I'm not going to call him. Do you think we have enough BNs for every genre of music or mapping? This kind of question I hear, or this kind of like idea is something that I hear quite a bit, especially in certain, uh, mapping communities where... Like, you have BNs who don't like their genre of music, and because of that, like, they can't get it ranked. Things like that. Um, and I think that the idea that BNs are restricted to certain genres is kind of a fallacy. Um, especially, like, like you, what comes to mind most prominently is, like, the metal mapping community, where they complain that there's no me uh, metal BNs um, who want to nominate their maps. And I think that that's just a wrong. Um, there aren't any mappers, there aren't very many, if any, uh, metal BNs at the moment, for example, um, that exclusively nominate metal. You know, you don't have, you know, like for me, I'm pretty much the only like real, like you have like Nafi, I guess. So like we have really two BNs who are like Vocaloid, uh, who, who really prioritize Vocaloid, right? Like, not the um, metal at all. Right. So, like, at the moment, we don't really have any BNs who prioritize metal. But again, you come back to me where I said before that I don't nominate exclusively Vocaloid because there just isn't enough out there for that, right? Mm -hmm. You have every other BN who... The vast majority of BNs are willing to nominate voc or metal maps or nominate maps outside of their preferences if they think that map is good. The problem is that most of the time, these metal maps, they don't have anything that compels people to go out of their way to nominate it, right? There needs to be something in these maps that is compelling for somebody to actually want to spend their time on it over any other map that they could get, right? It's easier if that BN really, really likes metal. You think of, I think of, uh, the real, uh, the King Henry, um, where he really, really loves metal. And because of that, he doesn't, and he actually like basically didn't nominate anything besides metal. Um, so he was mm -hmm. much more hardcore than I was. But I think that the idea that you have to have these BNs that are for each specific genre is, is not accurate because every BN can and will push that metal map if it appeals to them. Um, mm. So. All right. And I, I think that this is really made apparent when you think of like mappers like Mazarin and LMT that will come along and make a metal map and have no issues finding BNs for it. And then you have mappers that come along and have massive issues making ranking a metal map. And at the end of the day, it's just you can't make an average map and expect it to get ranked easily. You know, the mm -hmm. average anime map has a very hard time getting ranked generally because there's a ton of anime apps out there. Why would I nominate an average one when I can nominate a good one? But do you think like it's easier to mod um, an A map that than it is to mod a stream map if it was like same length, same difficulty? For me, I would have a harder time uh, modding a stream map, but that's only because I don't really mod stream maps. And, oh yeah, that's um... yeah, yeah, but like in general for like other BNs who are like more into streams. Uh, no, I don't. I wouldn't 
consider there to be like much of a difference in terms of the difficulty. Oh, okay. Uh, especially because like stream maps are much more simplistic, generally, at least the way that they're mapped by most stream mappers. And I think it, that's really what it comes down to is that the way that most stream mappers go and map their stuff is pretty uninspired. It's the, generally they all look the same. It's just like circular streams that lead into more circular streams. And there is nothing really appealing about it to anyone outside of people who are just looking to get that the, the performance points, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the vet on the Nebula map was, was took place at first place. I mean, the Nebula map was self explained to be simplistic and as boring as possible. Like he said he didn't want to have harder jumps because he wanted the map to be as easy and comfortable as possible. And that's all I, th I think that's basically the main point that Fuju had was that not that it's like this is not an invalid way of mapping, but it is there's so much more of that the map could do and that the jumps are not matching the difficulty of the streams. Like you, you can't have three star jumps and seven star streams. It just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when the diff, when the, the intensity of the song hasn't changed. Right. So like mm -hmm. if your song goes from like crazy death stream to really really calm jumps then that's fine if the song actually supports that but if the song doesn't support that and the song is maintaining the same level of intensity it doesn't make sense for the jumps to be so much easier and that's i think one of the main points that fuji had was that it, it just doesn't work um in terms of representing the song and uh then we go back to the point of like you know maps should represent songs because why are you putting that mp3 onto that map when it doesn't matter like just go change it for something else right like you're clearly mapping that song because it's important right um mm -hmm. so actually actually represent it you know um so i i, I think that there's it, it's a multi-layered thing of course but uh i think that again like you have to be above average and um, the other thing is that I think that like metal mapping in general is way behind anime mapping in terms of its level of development. There's a lot more anime mappers, so the level of competition is much higher. So the average anime mapper is actually much better than the average metal mapper, I think. Um, oh, there's yeah, only sure. a handful. That you ask any, you ask pretty, pretty much any mapper, and they can name on like one hand the number of good metal mappers. You ask the same people the number of good anime mappers, and they wouldn't be able to use two hands to do the same thing, right? Um, there's just way more and way better because the level of competition is much higher for, for the anime, quote-unquote, mapper than there is for the metal mapper. Yeah, and probably the amount of metal listeners is way less than, like, anime listeners. I mean, yeah, and metal that... is less popular, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of that has to come down to the fact that most metal mappers just settle for putting mindless streams and calling it a day and then you have good metal mappers like Mazer and lmt who actually make really interesting and compelling metal maps that just about anyone can appreciate or most bns would appreciate at the very least and nobody is taking inspiration from those guys they're mapping the same exact way that nobody actually finds interesting because mm -hmm. it's they're trying to make it as quote unquote comfortable as possible when comfort for the most part is actually just what people are familiar with um like you come across like there's people out there who actually prefer wide angle jumps over sharp angle jumps and that's because they play more wide angle jumps and they find it very comfortable to do wide angle jumps because that's what they're practicing right um same day with like no mod versus hidden some people prefer hidden because that's what they practice with and there is no quote unquote comfortable uncomfortable it is just what you personally find comfortable and uncomfortable and i think that's what a lot of people get wrong is that they cater to a spe very specific audience at the sacrifice of the quality of the map and it's just it just doesn't work all right and like personally what would you think is the hardest part about being a bn 
was like, like great. Oh, I, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll probably just use the same answer because I think that the hardest part about being a BN is being expected to work a full time job and the only payment of which being endless criticism. Um, yeah, you know, I fortunately, I fly under the radar for the most part, but you know, you have people like Fuju who are just trying to make maps better. Like his point was not that this map should not be ranked. It should it was just that he thought it should be improved. And the fact that people are having a problem with improving their map is kind of mind boggling. You know, it's fine to disagree that it's an improvement, but then you go to mediation and the vast majority of people being called in for that mediation agree with Fuju that the map could be improved and you still have a problem with it. So do you think that a lot of good, like quotes on quotes, good maps go and notice rejected after BNs neglect them for like some reason? Like some mappers are like complaining that BNs are not giving them any reason for why the map is like rejected or bad? There's kind of two questions in there. The first one is, you know, do I think that a lot of do do I think that there's a lot of good maps that go unnoticed or rejected? Um particularly after a BN uh, neglects them. Um, and I think that the answer is probably no. Um, I think that there is good maps that go unnoticed. Um, there's typically not a whole lot of good maps that get rejected by every BN because, you know, I've rejected good maps. Any BN will say that they've rejected good maps, and there could be numerous reasons why a BN would reject a map that's actually good. Um, you know, it could be that they just don't like the song and they don't want to spend five hours listening to it. Could be that they're swamped with 50 other requests. Maybe they have real life things going on. You know, a lot of people have to study for finals in, in, in college or, you know, whatever that may be, right? So there could be numerous reasons for people rejecting good maps. But generally, good maps don't go unnoticed or rejected by every BN. There are certainly are some that would go unnoticed in the graveyard, but that's typically because the, the mapper hasn't actually made an effort to push it. Yeah, I, um, I wanted to say that too. That so probably a lot of fault, like a lot of like the fault leans like lays on the mapper that they just like go uh -huh. ask one BN, they get rejected, and then you're like, oh, BN's bad, and then I'm not gonna do anything else with that. Like you should keep yeah. asking if you actually think that your map is good or like you believe in it. Like you should ask more people about it. Like don't absolutely, just, don't just stop on one BN and and say that everybody else is bad because they rejected your map because they didn't like the song like keep trying keep trying yeah 100 percent um there's again like over 70 bns usually so and each one if they're different you only need two of them so you might ask 60 bns and all of them reject you and then the next two people you ask are going to accept and you wouldn't know if you gave up after the first person right so you actually mm -hmm. have to go and ask pretty much every bn that's open um now, obviously, they have usually most of the time they have listed preferences, and so you can stay within those preferences um, if you can, right? Like if the person likes Vocaloid, or in my case, if the person has explicitly said that they really hate Vocaloid maps, and there are some BNs out there who really actually hate Vocaloid maps and they say it as much, um, then I don't request them, and that's okay. And I acknowledge that I don't want them to nominate. I don't want them to rank my map that they don't think is actually good or they don't like it, right? Like. Part of it is that BN is putting their name behind your map. And I don't want somebody to come along and put their name behind my map if they actually don't like it. Um, that oh, doesn't yeah, sure. really give me anything. Um, so the, for good maps to go unnoticed, it's pretty unheard of. But it would be because they aren't making an effort to get it out there and get it ranked. A lot of the times, good mappers actually don't even bother making spreads. They're just making maps and they're very much knowing that it's going to go to the graveyard um and it's hard for a bn to find those those maps sometimes for sure absolutely and that's because there's a billion maps in the graveyard and if you don't actually try to put it into their queue and put it in front of that bn very unlikely they're going to find it, it happens occasionally but it, very unlikely mm. as for the other question that you asked as for BNs rejecting maps for an unspecific or generic kind of reason. I think a lot of BNs do that because they get on for giving a reason. Any reason that a BN can give will actually just get on. Um, I've seen BNs be like, uh, tell the mapper in confidence that, you know, you know, I, d I don't like that 
you're it's your first map and you're not, you don't seem to be putting um the level of attention into it that i think that you should for your first map with your first rank map which is very special um like you should be putting a ton of effort into your first rank because it's, it's your first right it's going to be with you for the rest of your life um and i would prefer to see you put more effort into it and then they take that screenshot of that BN saying that and they put it on Twitter. Or you might oh, have yeah. a BN oh, yeah. say like, oh, I don't think that your jumps are very interesting. And they go put it on Twitter and they get and like everyone's like, oh my god, the jumps are so much fun. And it, it's the BN's opinion. Like, they don't have to justify their opinion, really, because it's they may not just like your map, right? And mm-hmm. why are we forcing them to nominate your map if they don't actually want to? You know, it could be, and again, it can be for whatever reason. And so most BNs just default to, I don't like the song, or it's not for me. Something really generic, something that is pretty non-offensive, because they don't, we don't need the, the harassment that some BNs get for giving their opinions. There's definitely, the majority of members, I think, are pretty chill about it. Like, you can tell them, and they're going to be fairly chill. They may not like the reason, but they're going to acknowledge that it's just your opinion and they move on. But again, there's a couple of mappers out there, a couple of people out there who will actually go and try to harass you for it. And what kind of BN wants to deal with that? Like, it, it has happened in the past, and it scared every BN away from doing it. And yeah, that's, that also hurts your rep- reputation. Like, if you talk to one BN, like, and then you go to another one, like, they'll, like, they'll just look at you and be like, bro, you... I, I don't know if I want to deal with that. Yeah, you, you certainly get a reputation as, like, a mapper for that. BNs get a public reputation that they don't they don't need. They're just trying to do their thing. They're just trying to mod and nominate maps they like. And if they don't like your map for whatever reason, they don't need to get a bunch of for it. Um, like I've gotten a ton of rejections for myself, and I'm I do it too. Like part of it is like as a BN myself now, and having rejected a ton of maps, I can never blame a BN for rejecting my map anymore because I've rejected so many maps myself. Like. Part of it is you have to actually have been in the system to fully understand and appreciate the system for what it actually is. And again, I'm not saying it's perfect, but a lot of the people complaining about the current system have never been in the shoes of somebody who's actually had to do it. And mm-hmm. you know, you can't expect a BN to come along and rank every single map that they get requested that's meeting the ranking criteria, because if you were in that shoes, you wouldn't do the same thing either. You know, the only people who yeah. can do that are people who would actually do that. And there is no BN out there who can nominate every single map that comes along that is meeting the ranking criteria. There's not a single BN out there who can. Oh yeah, there was some, like, that's what people also complain, that it's hard to find BNs, but just because of that reason. That's, you know, like, some people think that you have to message, like, 70 people in a row to, like, have a chance to even rank the map, and that's one of the issues. But, like, I don't even know how we, how we could address that, because, like, there's no, like, solution for it. Like, you can't blame anybody for it, and you, it kind of right. makes sense, but you also can't blame anybody, and you can't easily fix it. Because, like, what else, like, are we supposed to do? What the map are supposed to do? It's so hard to find BNs because I have to message, like, 70 people, and I'm... Without, I actually like... do agree with that. I, I do agree that it's very annoying to find BNs because they're all using their own system to accept requests. Um... I actually do think that we could use some level of centralization um, in requesting. Like, I would much rather people kind of go... I would much rather BNs fall into certain groups. They could be self-formed or whatever. Or they could be one giant BN group, um, but probably, like, smaller groups, like Vocaloid BNs, Metal BNs, you know, people who have similar preferences... Um, subdivisions kind of do that, but they're not really used at all. Um, so, like, some kind of formal grouping of BNs where people can request a large group of BNs at the same time and don't have to go and individually recommend, uh, request them. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a better system. Some some aspect of that, at least, would be make a better a better system. I do think it is very draining to message 70 BNs um, and then keep track of them all because some people want you to like 
message again after a week if you get nothing. Um, some people, you you might not actually hear back from that VM. Like a lot of people have like their their queues on like Google Forms, and then you have to go and check their Google Sheet to find out if you got denied or accepted. Um, so it becomes a very painful to like track who you've requested. I think that there should just be some way to request all of them at the same time. Oh yeah, that's for that's that's what I was thinking as well. But I proposed that too, but like it's really impossible to do, unless it's like actually self formed by like group of VNs or by Peppy mm -hmm. himself. Yeah, it's it's hard to it would be hard to group the VNs, especially because every VN is operating on their own schedule. Um, like some VNs are only accepting maps like once a month. Some VNs are open all the time, so it becomes kind of difficult to kind of consolidate all of that. Question. <laughs> okay, sure. A lot of people argue that if you want to fix it, you should be you should become a BN yourself. So do you think that one person could actually change anything? Or... Um, well, I do think that one person can make significant changes. And I think that at the end of the day, it has to, in order to make a change, you actually have to understand the system as it currently is and the flaws of the system. And people from outside really can't fully appreciate the flaws or what works um, and even the pros about the system, right? Um, and at the end of the day, it requires Peppy to change anything. And I talked about that before. It requires Peppy to change anything. There are official processes involved in changing the system. Like you have the wiki for ranking, changing the ranking criteria, right? Anyone who wants to change the ranking criteria goes to the wiki, including the NAT. Even if all of the NAT wanted to agree on something, they still put it on the wiki to get everyone's opinion on it before they make a change. Um, and so that is like the official way to make a change if you want to make a change. And people instead are, are opting to complain on Twitter. Uh, and it's just yes. not what the way to do it. So understanding like the flaws is so important for anyone who actually wants to improve the system because the, they need to understand the flaws in order to make a suggestion that addresses it and is convincing to everyone who's currently operating in the system. Most of the time people's suggestions, most of the time people complaining about the system are not actually giving any suggestions. They're just venting about their issues with it um, and attacking the people who are participating in it. Um, or the suggestions they give just don't work. They've either been tried before, so a lot of people don't know the history of how we got to our current system. So a lot of times they're suggesting stuff that's been tried before and failed miserably. <laughs> or they're suggesting stuff that just doesn't, that wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't work. Um, and it's because they don't know how the system actually works. Yeah, and becoming um, so the end that... actually would help you understand that and actually have like... Exactly, exactly. And Sensible. I do think like my own experience, in my own experience, as somebody who spewed a lot of the same stuff that a lot of people are spewing, and then be joined the system and understood how it worked, or learned how it worked, and then realized, wow, I was an idiot back then, um, would kind of go through a similar process. There's very few people who go through the process of becoming a modder, become a BN, and then still think that people should have no preferences and accept any map that they get requested and whatever that may be. Like, you you can't really fully appreciate the struggles that a BN goes through without being a BN. Like, I have no issues with people saying that the system could be improved. But they are attacking the people in it. They are making bold claims about, you know, what the system should become or... Most of the time, they're not suggesting anything, which is actually, I think, the worst thing you can do is complain about it, but then not actually suggest anything. If you want to change something, that's fine. I don't care. But you need to actually go and put an effort into doing that. Oh, I want there to be more PP farm maps out there, like the, the sharp angle will jump spam. It's like, okay, that's fine. But don't expect current BNs to do that for you. Like... We are just nominating maps that we think are good. If we thought those maps were good, we'd be nominating them already. But most people don't think that they're good. So don't expect us to do that. We're not getting paid. Like, your alternative is that you become a BN and nominate the maps that you think are good, which is totally fine. That's what everyone else is doing. Or you pay us so that we have to do it as a job, and then you define what we have to nominate. Peppy's mm -hmm. not going to pay us. Are you going to pay us? <laughs> like, <laughs> where's this money coming from? <laughs> Like, we're all doing no. it at Volunteer. We're all doing it because we love the game. We're all doing it because we love the maps. 
the moment that we stop loving the game, the moment we stop loving the maps, and boy, if we turn this into a full-time job that's not paying us, we are going to start hating the game and start hating the maps. That's when the ranking system dies. Like, that's when no maps get ranked. And about the issues, I don't know if you mentioned it already, but personally, what do you think is the, the big issue, issue currently in, like, the system? And how would you improve it? Like, I know it's in, like, surreal concept, concept, but if you were Peppy, what would you do? Like, f uh, The first thing I would do if I was Peppy is add a ranking criteria rule that says you cannot have backgrounds on songs that are unrelated to the song. Uh, I think that having like a Hatsune Miku so background on some metal map is actually stupid, but okay. that's just me. Um, <laughs> okay, that's, that's, a good, that's a good. That's a that's a funny one. You gotta start um, somewhere. But uh, in terms of like changing the actual system as a whole, I really don't have a strong preference or like a strong idea as to like what would make it better because there's there's pros and cons to everything at the end of the day i've heard ideas that i think are have merit um the most common one or the the most prominent one to me would be the idea of separating um or like making a whole new section uh for maps uh that are mapper appreciated um like uh calling out like spotlights or something like that and you have like a smaller bng or a smaller nat that would um nominate maps into that section and these are maps are like these are mapper endorsed these are actually really high quality maps right and then with the ranking section you just make it open to anyone or you would make it auto rank like if your map passes like an ai map uh like ai uh, maps that verify or check, then it's rankable and it automatically gets ranked and you get the leaderboard on it. And there's absolutely zero quality standard or quality control on it. Like, mm -hmm. something like that. Or you make it so that, like, I've heard an idea that every ranked mapper with one ranked map is able to uh, nominate a map and it takes, like, five or ten of these people to go and rank a map. And so you just have a, a huge pool of people who are not necessarily super experienced modders, but just a huge pool of people, and they just like put five of their five of these people team up together, put a, mod the map, nominate it, and that is the ranked section. And then you have the spotlight section as well for like the more experienced BNs or or modders, right? Um, like these are the common ideas that I've heard. I think they they have merit. They're not perfect, but I think that they might be better than the current system. I don't have a strong preference on it, though. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. That definitely makes uh, sense. Like, if we're going to change something, it would have to be a pretty major change. I don't think that the current BNG standards can really be lowered. They're already pretty low. Um, like, most people who are applying, who are trying to get in or whatever, just aren't good enough to cut it. The people who are good enough burn out really, really quickly. And there's no incentive to come back. There's no incentive to stay. Like, people get in because they want to nominate maps that they like. They burn out because they get zero for it. Um, other than, again, we talked about, like, the criticism and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, and they course. burn out. And once people have achieved the, getting that BN, most people are pretty chill with not being a BN ever again. So, like, you see a lot of these experienced modders and mappers never come back to BN. And those are the people that we need to pull back because those are the people who have the knowledge and have the ability to... To rank maps right mm -hmm. um we also of course need to pull in new people and people are getting scared away there's less less experienced people to teach the new people like it's just like it's becoming a problem uh i would say and at the end of the day the system is run by volunteers like we can't expect objectivity from our bns the, the we have to make it more incentivizing to be a BN, to stay a BN, to come back as a BN, and there's not really a good way to do that. Yeah, obviously. I have my own opinions on like what maps should be and stuff like that. I mean, that's um, every BN. That's literally everybody. every mapper is like that, or every every person is like that. I mean, yeah, just, obviously. When I was a player, like learning the game, I was very heavily inspired by Monstrata, and wanted to make maps that were as fun and comfortable and nice to look at as Monstrata. 
Like, that was my goal. He was my role model. And then, as I learned more and more about the game and more about mapping and became less of a player, um, I became more of a mapper because I found mapping more rewarding because um, I was actually able to be a part of a community instead of just trying to retry spam the same map over and over again and get fr nothing but frustration. Like, I didn't find that part of being a player very fun. And that's kind of what you had to be as a player, honestly, it felt like. I learned, like, my horizons expanded so much as a mapper. Like, I learned to appreciate maps that were not Monstrata, that were not Sotarks, that were not Brovich, right? Like, I could learn to appreciate maps that were uncomfortable. I could learn the map maps that appreciate maps that were ugly, uh, or, like, conventionally ugly, quote-unquote. Um, because, and I learned to appreciate songs in a more meaningful way. Like, how does this map fundamentally represent the song? How is the mapper expressing their interpretation of the song? Um, things like that I learned a lot more of and began to appreciate a lot as a mapper and not a player. I started from appreciating and loving these, like, PP aim sharp angle stuff and moved towards appreciating the, not necessarily wafer, but like the more wafer kind of-esque maps where they're much more art, artful um, and they're more unique and interesting, right? Um, because you actually feel like you're getting a sense of what the mapper is interpreting that song as. It's much more of an art, right? Uh, oh, yeah, instead of it just trying to be you are clicking circles to a rhythm that the song is kind of doing. Especially because, like, a lot of those jump maps, they're just showing you the... They're just having you click to the the drum rhythm, which is usually, like, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, snare. Like, that's not even the melody <laughs> for most of these songs, right? Um, and you're just playing the drum, which is just keeping the beat, keeping the tempo, like... It's you're not even really playing the music. You're just playing, uh, you know, this, this copy pasted rhythm, right? And it's boring as hell. Um, it's uninspired. This change over time has really kind of defined how I look at things now. Um, where I actually look at things and I'm like, I want to see the mapper's interpretation of the music. Like, I don't want it to be like just a rhythm game level. I want it to be. A, so a representation of the song, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the that's that's the vision. I mean, we now, also have to like. It should do both. It should do both, and I fully acknowledge that it should do both. But there's like that fine line where it should not be a soulless, where you can take and copy paste the same app and put it onto something else. Like you, you shouldn't be able to change the MP3, and the the map should not still kind of work, right? There should be something that's unique to that map that is only there because it works with the song that it's with, right? Mm -hmm. Every song is unique. Every map should also be unique. It only makes sense, right? So yeah, that, uh, this is probably one of the reasons why, like, there's, like, this huge movement of hating on BNs for ranking maps like that. Like, for example, that Wolfers map, like, people are like, this is not for us, we can't play that. Like, I'm six digits and I won't be able to play it. Why don't you rank, like, Chica Chica, which is gonna be farmable for me. And most people mm -hmm. were, like, used to it for so long. And there was like that Sodox meta back in the day. And now that like you're explaining your views, like I see why some people are mad about it. But like I, I mean I see I see both sides, or at least I try yeah, to. Same. Um especially uh, because I was on the other side in the past and I switched to this side, quote unquote side. Um it's not really a side, I guess. But at the end of the day, the way I see it is there are thousands of Sotarks like songs, thousands of Chica Chica type of maps, right? Out there, already ranked, already available for you to go farm, right? You have Tillerino and other things that help you find those, right? We don't need, we don't really need more of them. They're not actually different nowadays than they were in the past, right? What is the point of making a bunch more? Like, I'm okay with some being there. I don't, I'm not saying that we have to stop completely. By no means. If people like those maps, people can map them. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to map them or that we should outlaw them or whatever. But I don't think that we need every map to do that. And I don't think most people are saying that, mind you. Um, I don't think that we even need the majority of maps to do that, um, which I think is what more people are wanting. Just because the players, quote-unquote, want it, 
I actually think that most players specifically look for those maps because they've been conditioned to appreciate them. There's been so many of them, and so many people got into Osu in the COVID era when these maps were really, really big. And I got into the into Osu in that time too, um, when the maps were really, really big, and most maps were like this. And that's what they learned to appreciate. That's what they learned to play. That's what they learned to find comfortable. They trained themselves to play these maps particularly well. And as a result, their skills on reading, their skills on awkward aim and listening to the song and reading approach circles and um, flow aim and wide angle stuff and really anything that is not within the confines of the PP, sharp angle, jump spam, would they would find uncomfortable. And that is fair because that's not what they've been playing. But at the same time, they find this uncomfortable and they think it's bad because it's uncomfortable. They don't, they don't, most people don't realize that it's uncomfortable to them because they're not practicing the other skills that the other maps are using. And mm -hmm. I actually think that's bad for the health of the game. That there's so much aspect, there's so much depth to Osu that is not being used because people are expecting certain ways of mapping. Um, and like Wafer, you have doing really, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Wafer Smaps by any means, but they're much more interesting than something like the, the Nebua, like Sharp, the, the stream maps that are the only the streams. And a lot of the times, like I see on these like uh, stream maps that the rhythms aren't even actually in the song. They're just, they're filler. <laughs> they're just doing it just to keep the rhythm uh, yeah. the same. Sure, it makes the map mindless and comfortable, but it doesn't actually represent the song. And something like Wafer, he uses unique skill sets. He His maps are much more interesting of an interpretation. They're un unconventional, and they may even be uncomfortable, but a lot of times that discomfort is intentionally done in order to represent the song in a more meaningful way. I actually really love when people intentionally make things uncomfortable to represent maybe a singer being really tense, you know, or the lyrics being uncomfortable. Maybe if the lyrics are about death or suicide or something like that, then maybe the map can be uncomfortable to represent the discomfortable nature of the the meaning of the song, you know? Like there's so much more nuance to mapping that can go into representing these songs instead of just doing the same wide angle jump spam that is you know, cross screen, especially because when you have jumps that are that big, there's only a very limited number of places you can place those orientations that you can place them. We don't need map 5000 with up and down fire rage jumps when we can have much more interesting, much more dynamic ways of representing music. Oh, yeah, I agree for sure. I mean, yeah, that's just the argument that um, I, I bad map bad because I can't play it like that. I never I, yeah. I always like avoid calling a map bad only because it's not my skill set or I can't play it. Like, as long as it's, like, timed well and whatever the patterns are, whatever the skill set are, I just try to say, like, okay, I'm not really good at it, but it doesn't mean that the map is bad. But all right, I should really get going. It's been quite a long call. Yeah, it's been how long? How long has it been? I've been recording for two hours and 30 minutes. And I'm actually really appreciate that you came here and, and talked about it because you're a great talker. I, I really enjoyed listening to you for two hours. Cool. We have, like, <laughs> half, half an hour. Well, I appreciate you being pretty friendly, so it's always good. All right, well, I will let you go. Have a good one, and uh, best of luck with editing this. <laughs> All right, you too. All right.